and Arena left completely shocked as Ravishing Rick Rude pins the Ultimate Warrior to win the WWE Intercontinental Championship with a little assist from his manager, The Brain. Hey, if the ref doesn't see it, he can't call it. Those are the breaks. With the crowd buzzing from the monumental upset, it was time for WrestleMania V to deliver its main event. The Macho Man Randy Savage defending the WWE Championship against his former best friend and Mega Powers partner, Hulk Hogan. Ooh, yeah, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Dig it. He was one of a kind. He was intense. He was a great athlete. Everything about him was 100% perfect for sports entertainment and professional wrestling. While the split of the Mega Powers was made official on a February 1989 edition of the main event, the cracks had been obvious to many long before that fateful night. Hogan and Savage's friendship had been beneficial to both, which was never more evident than the year prior at WrestleMania IV. On this evening, the vacant WWE Championship was to be decided in a 16-man, one-night tournament. In an absolutely brilliant display of athleticism and heart, the Macho Man would compete in four different matches to claim the championship. But it was in the final against the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase that Savage would run into seemingly more trouble than he could handle. In DiBiase's corner was Andre the Giant. Throughout the match, Andre interjected, bringing Savage's offense to a halt or distracting him for attacks by DiBiase. Eventually, Miss Elizabeth would run into the back, bringing Hogan out to restore some order. And Hogan's presence led to Savage's win with a perfectly timed chair shot that the ref didn't catch. Like I said before, those are the breaks. The Mega Powers would be locked in a heated rivalry with Andre and DiBiase, now known as the Mega Bucks, that culminated with their victory at the very first SummerSlam. Around this time, though, it appeared Randy Savage was jealous of the closeness between Hogan and Elizabeth. Some on commentary would mention it, but many were quick to dismiss that there was any tension between the two. Things got worse at the 1989 Royal Rumble when Hogan eliminated Savage, some claim accidentally, which infuriated the Macho Man. Everything came to a head at the main event two on February 3rd, 1989. The Mega Powers would compete in tag team action looking to show the bond was still strong. After Miss Elizabeth was caught up in the action, Hogan would take her to the back for medical attention, leaving the Macho Man alone. Upon his return to the match, Hogan would extend a hand to tag in, but would instead be slapped in the face by an enraged Randy Savage. A post-match altercation in the locker room would make it official. The Mega Powers were dead, and a clash was inevitable. Soon after, Hogan would lay down the challenge for WrestleMania V. In a final twist, Miss Elizabeth would side with neither man, insisting that she'd be ringside in a neutral corner instead, offering to help either if they needed it. We were able to sit down with Hulk Hogan to talk about the night the Mega Powers explode. The lines were so blurry between reality and what we were trying to accomplish. He was madly in love with his wife, Elizabeth, for real. He was madly jealous for real. Leading up to it, you know, when she was managing him or managing me or couldn't depend on who she was going to manage, it made him crazy. I just didn't know what type of abuse I was in for, so it was a little nuts. He was there to go, and he pushed the gas pedal down really hard on me in that match. Once you became a Macho Man fan, that was the only thing you could think about. His look, just the way he carried himself, I had nothing but respect for him. It's always so great to hear from the legends themselves when it comes to these unforgettable WrestleMania moments and matches. Thanks again to Hulk Hogan for his time. Now, let's get you into the middle of an intensely heated WWE Championship match where the world would watch the Mega Powers explode.
came into this match incensed, and the Macho Man looked to use that to his advantage early. With months of payback heading his way, Savage was evasive and defensive to the bull rush tactics of Hogan appearing to frustrate the challenger. Hogan had a look in his eye that night. You could tell he wanted to hurt Savage. And Savage also wasn't shy about using Miss Elizabeth to his advantage, flagrantly bringing her into harm's way to stop Hogan in his tracks. Savage was playing by nobody's rules but his own. And if Hogan was going to get any revenge, he'd have to find a way to keep his own temper in check. Savage was showing early on that his approach would be as chaotic as possible. And now a once rampaging Hogan had slowed things down, looking to restore some order. The Macho Man's actions sent a clear message that anything goes and anyone would be fair game. Savage had, for the moment, managed to turn the tide with a well-placed boot. Now Savage wanted to slow things down, but this also gave him a chance to talk directly to Hogan. To remind Hogan of what he'd done to him at the main event. To rub in Hogan's face the fact that the Macho Man is the WWE Champion. That he knows Hogan is jealous of him and always has been. To look over at Miss Elizabeth and taunt her, because Savage doesn't for one second believe that she's neutral at all. The Macho Man was getting some energy back while slowly sucking the life out of Hogan. Could the cheers of the Hulkamaniacs get him back to his feet?
Hogan would get back on the attack once he broke free. Flash of offense is extinguished as quickly as it started, and Randy Savage seemed to have Hogan on the brink of exhaustion in their mega power collision. In one of the more surprising moments of this match, Miss Elizabeth proves herself true to her word, stopping Hogan from running Savage into the ring post, maintaining her neutral status. The Macho Man would take advantage of Hogan's reluctance. Once again, Savage showed no regard for the safety of Liz. fed up with her presence, Savage would insist to the referee that she be removed and she'd be escorted back to the locker room. Having his constant distraction removed seemed to invigorate Savage. He was looking to put the finishing touches on what had been a master class to that point. Just moments away from showing that it was Savage who was the true force of the Mega Powers, not Hogan. Looking to set up his vaunted flying elbow, Savage would target Hogan's throat. Hulkamaniacs knew to never lose hope, but it wasn't looking good for Hogan here. The Macho Man looked better than he ever had, seemingly on the verge of his biggest victory yet.